Call from Nay Nay. Nay Nay. Hey, how's it going, ma'am? Nay Nay. Yeah, hey, I am an old lady, but I've got a, a revenge story. I I put sugar in my own gas tank one time. Really? Uh, yeah. To get revenge on yourself because you sabotaged yourself in some way? Well, see, this is a never-ending yeah. cycle because you get yeah. revenge on yourself for getting for putting sugar in your own gas tank, and then you well, get revenge back, and and you know. And guess ends. what? It was all over one little tiny word, the word or, because when I got married, see, this motherfucker, and I have no, I don't feel bad about it at all. He sure. taught me, he taught me in buying a car. He never worked. Fuck him. Well, he taught me into putting his name or me on the title. And he waited till I fell asleep. My kids were still like in grace, like like they were young. Just left me, abandoned me. Took my fucking Mercedes at that. It was a classic. It was in perfect condition. Took the car, and then had the title transferred over. Yeah, I was pretty mad about it. Into his name, he stole your car. Yes, and like his mom helped him do it. Like who does that? That motherfucker, so my cousin came up with this great idea. You know, she's young. I'm getting out of breath. It's so good to get this off my chest. I like your show, by the way. Thank you very much. Let me take a sip of my alcohol. Hang on. Go go for it. Um, It's Monday night. (sighs) That's much better. What is your your relationship to this guy again? He's like your ex-boyfriend or something? Husband. Husband did that to Current me. Current husband? Are you still married to him, or are you guys officially divorced? No, he's dead now. He's dead now. He's dead. Okay, how long yeah, ago did he die? Yeah, that's another story. He so died in his sleep. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sad about it. I'd be lying if I said I was sad about it. Sure. I just fuck him. Fuck him. But anyway, so my cousin, she's like, look, fuck him too. Let's, let's go, you know, I'll mix up some sugar water in the pitcher. And, like, her mom is like this, I can't say a lot, but she's high up, like, in the corporate world. And it was, she started the idea. Hold like on, she got, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The corporate, <laughs> what, what, what corporate world? Because there's a lot of different. Right, there, there exactly. Is, there's right. a lot of different industries. It's a major one. It's a major one. And she's, okay, a she's, major corporation. So I wouldn't want to do nothing that would you know, interfere with her job, but she was down with it, too. Like, she was waking us up and help us, helping us mix it. But, see, I was concerned because in the night thing, I was like, hell, this happened so long ago. But my car was like an 84 or 85 Mercedes E-Class, each E20 or something. I don't even remember, but it, it was a nice little car, okay? It, in that model, the gas cap cover has a metal pin that when you shut it and, you know, you lock your door, you're driving, whatever, that pin goes through for security, right? So nobody can just poof, pop it open or whatever, you know? Like I was planning to do to my own. So I was like, fuck it, I'd rather kill that car. And him have to like invest in a lot of work to to fix it than for him to just can I can I can I tell you something? Yeah. Can I tell you something, Nene? Sure. Um, and you know, I'm gonna tell you this because uh, you know, I like you, Nene. I uh Oh fine, I appreciate that. Um you know, and I want the best for you. Nene, listen, you know, it sounds like sounds like uh you're pretty upset. Oh, Oh no, not anymore. I mean, I, I'm just kind of nervous because you know uh, I don't usually talk to people anyway. So, but I like your show. I, I you, felt Nene. drawn to you. I felt drawn. Nene, to you. Listen, Nene, Nene. You know, Nene. I understand that you're uh, upset at your your ex husband. I hope. I would hope that uh, you know you don't keep that anger with you because you know. Oh. Look, Ex-husband, he's gone, you know. Cause... Look, I didn't oh, do... I just want to say, you know, look, at, at a certain point, Nene, you know, you got to forgive uh, for your own sake, you know, not for the sake of... Uh, hey, look, I could have done something it. to him, not the car, if I was that upset about it, you know. But I was just like, fuck, the car's going down. It's just going sure. to be a, a... It's going to have to be a victim of the war, you know, a casualty. He ain't get... If I don't get the car that I work and pay for, that motherfucker... So, Nene, 
Nay, nay. So you sound like. So you told me you don't. You don't talk to a lot of people. Mm-mm. Is that I don't, by, is that don't. by choice or do you do you choose to be? Definitely, I, absolutely. Hey, I live. On, uh, we have we're like Dean's Day preppers where I live in Tennessee. For real, real talk. Like we got like two years of food. Like. Who's, right we, who's we with? Uh, how many? How many my kids you got? You and the kids? No, no, my kids are grown. I have a, a an almost ten year old grandbaby in Michigan. Yeah, oh, I'm not God. just a, I'm just like a redneck woman that's just real independent. I got I you know I like my homemade wine and my my herbal remedies, but you know I, I don't bother anybody. I'm just a crazy old lady, I guess. Well, look, but it, anyways, sounds, it sounds like you like your life. You know, it sounds like you got a good thing going on. Oh, it's Congrats. great because when I want to go do something, Nashville's 30 minutes away. You know, I'll just go down there and kick it on Broadway if I want to. But I, uh, this shit gets old after a while. Anybody that lives in a touristy place, you know, be, it, it's just another day, you know. Nashville, it ain't shit. It's really stinky, honestly, but. It's fine. But, 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 what are your, Nene, what are you, uh, what are your, what are your, what are your, your children are grown, you said? What do they do for a living? Well, my oldest one is in the restaurant business. He cooks. He cooks. And my youngest one, I think he, the last job he had, he was a tow truck driver. Tow truck so, driver. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you do? Do you, are you, do you work? Are you retired? Well, I, I was in the corporate world. I did purchasing for, uh, a major hotel, I bought food and liquor for nine hotels. I did that. And I was a billing analyst before that. But before all that, before I took myself back to school back to school, I I sewed shirts in a in a shirt factory for four years. You and I built most before too. Yes, yeah, so I what said for that your team? I, I I built boats too before that in a boat factory to help put uh, boats together. That was a hard wow. job. Yeah, I know. Those both sound like hard jobs. I, I couldn't imagine uh, sewing shirts for four years. That sounds like uh, a yeah. yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, but, you know. Well, well so what, what, do you, what do you do now? Not a fucking thing. Not a fucking thing. I, uh, I got a settlement. But, uh, who'd I you, do who'd, you, who'd you get a I settlement a from? Oh, man. Oh. Hold on. Who'd you get a settlement from? We don't need to talk about all that just yet. We just start talking. You awfully nosy, but maybe I'll call you back and maybe not. I don't know yet. This is this has been hard. I've been, like, painting the whole time. It's been too much for me. I don't You've even know what faint- a fucking twitch is. I thought a twitch was something you got when you had a little too much of a bad thing. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, to be honest with you. That's okay. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to tell me, Nana. I know that. But you're all right for a loser. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming, Nana. You have a good rest of the night. from Liz. Liz. Holy sh- shit. What? Um, I'm really good. How are you? You're really good. Are you just saying that, or are you actually really good? I'm. I'm on your show. I'm. I'm doing really good. You know, I for I I pre- I, I want to say two things, which is I'm extremely grateful. To be in a position where you feel good about being on my show. But, logically, many people have been on my Gecko show that d- don't feel good. And, and in fact, I, some people walk away feeling worse. I think that's impossible when they talk to you. Good. Our expectations are set correctly. And we may now begin whatever it is that we do here. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I could have... I really I really had the opportunity to open up this conversation like a normal fucking person. And I blew it. Now I'm just being hard on myself. But it's all an act. It's theater. How, how seriously can you take me? I'm a gecko guy. Gek, you're amazing. Don't be so hard on yourself. 
Have you ever gotten revenge? I have, yes. I I have two really good stories. One of them is, is about is a really classification. Ugh, that's really hard. One is about well, you know a classification. What, you, know what, you know what? Here's what here's what we'll do. Here's what you do. Here's what we'll do. Tell mm -hmm. us. Um, I like what you were doing just now. You were giving us uh, log lines. Give us both log lines, and then I will let the chat decide which story they would like to hear. Okay, a classification of animals angered me at one point, and I got revenge. Or I got revenge against a childhood bully. Hmm. Chat, what do we want to hear? Do we want to hear the, uh, um, do we want to hear the bully or the classific? I'm, I'm so curious what the class, the chat is heavily in favor of the bully because I don't think that we understand what the animal thing meant, but let's, let's do the bully. Okay. So let me set the stage for you. I'm in like first grade and I'm a chubby kid. Okay. Sure. And this girl in the library was like, you're really fat. So I pushed over a bookshelf on top of her, but it caused a cascade across the library. You pushed over a bookshelf on top of her. I mean, it started off that one was a very short bookshelf, but it knocked over the next one and the next one. And so I ran out of the library. Obviously, I ruined the whole library. What was I going to do? Uh, you ruined the library, you say? Yes. Okay. Hmm. So, first of all, did you succeed? Did you successfully pin this young girl under a stack of books as you so desired? Absolutely. And um, how did that feel as you watched her trapped underneath the bookshelf? And I laughed don't pretty be hard. Afraid to say that it felt really good. Oh no, I'm not afraid to say it felt really good. It was awesome. Mm. Why? Why was it so awesome? Mm, because she was like six foot tall in like first grade. She had like a growing issue, so she was super tall. It's not like I could approach her on the playground and punch her. So this was the perfect revenge. I used my skills to take her out. And why? Okay, so so maybe I missed some stuff here, but what we, what was she doing to you at first? So oh, you she had been she was she had been bullying me for a while. I was a chubby kid, so she made a lot of jokes, and like my last name's kind of weird, so she made a lot of jokes about my last name, and What's your last you know name? I just it anymore what's your last name uh reticus reticus yeah what like what kind of how would she make fun of that um she told all the boys i was ready to kiss it was it was very awkward in first grade i like i like that that's a good uh that's a good tinder bio ready to kiss it, it is on my tinder bio well there we go okay so you appropriated it into your own thing you owned it yeah and has it has it gotten you matches has, has it piqued people's interest not really no oh okay i was gonna say if it did then you had her to thank true what is she doing now um I'm pretty sure she's on her third child, and she's currently living in a trailer park. Hmm. Uh, how do you know this? Facebook? Uh, yeah, Facebook. She posts on Snapchat a lot, too. Uh, does she seem happy? No. What makes you say that? Typically, she's posting about how horrible her kids are. You think she doesn't like her kids? Oh, for sure. At the end of the day, when all is yes. and done, when they're being put to bed, and she looks at them, she holds them, perhaps, do you think that this woman loves her children? That's really hard. I think... I think maybe, but I feel like she loved the baby daddy more.
So, this woman seems to not like her life. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Are you, like, totally detached from the situation, or have you held a grudge? Um, I haven't held any grudge. I mean, she made fun of me when it came to the animal classification thing, but besides that, I haven't held a grudge. Okay. In condensed into, you know, maybe a 30 second, 15 second even version, what is the abstract of the animal classification story? I was attacked by a squirrel. And ever since then, I've had a very bad fear of squirrels. Interesting. Tell me about the squirrel attack. Um, I was walking home one day and I noticed the squirrel following me. So I started to pick up my pace and it was still behind me. So I started running and it chased after me. And it was making this weird sound, like a, I can't even describe it. It was like a clicking sound. So when I got home and locked the door behind me, obviously, I went to my desktop computer and I realized after doing some research that that was a squirrel mating call. Mm. The squirrel was attracted to you sexually. Yes. And you did not reciprocate. No. Do you like your life? Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Good. What'd you say her name was? Liz. Thank you so much for sharing, Liz. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the night. Thanks. Love you, Gek. Call from... Rodney. Rodney? Holy moly, I'm on, man. You are? How are you, Rodney? Dude, I'm uh, I'm chilling. So how are you, Mr. Gek? You know, I'm okay. I'm hanging out in the forest. Um, the fo- yes, the forest. The forest is nice. I like it here. Just tuned in. You got you got a uh, good caller tonight. You're you. I got I got you, Rodney. Rodney, look, I have a topic for tonight. Here. Yeah, man. What's your topic? Um, asking people about bad habits. You got any bad habits, Rodney? Ooh, Mr. Geck. Um, I'm, I'm at the, I'm at the young age of 18 and I've, I've been on the Mary Jane for a few years and I don't know how I feel about it. I think I, I think it's a regret. Mm. It's a regret. You regret, what do you regret? regret, You regret like ever starting smoking weed? You regret having discovered it? Uh, I mean, I guess. I, I Rodney, Rodney, Rodney. I, from, uh, I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is me or you or what's going on. But you're a little. Uh, you're a little. Um, am I quiet? No, not quiet. But you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I mean, I can go. I can go over here. Is this better? I went to the other side of my room. That's perfect. How much? That's as much as I can do for you. Mm, I used to, I used to smoke a few times a day, but I, I'm, I'm clean today. You're clean today. All right. Which is kind of cool. You start with one day. Yeah, yeah. I like that. What's your, what's your motivation? I I, I feel like if you have, if this has become a habit for you, I feel like it's, like always helpful to have like a thing that you're doing instead do you have something like that no man i think that's like the biggest problem like i moved to north carolina and i don't got like any good friends and i feel like if like the past two years i've just it's like really uh rodney 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 i'm sorry rodney Uh I'm pacing, bro. I'm sorry. Don't pace. Stay. If you can stay right uh, where you are. I'm right here. I sat down. Good. For you. Good. Hmm. What did you move to? Where did you move? North Carolina, you said? 
Yeah, man. In the mountains. What'd you move there to do? I moved here because my dad moved here, and then my mom followed. And I used to live in, like, Orlando. So it's a really big change. You know what I mean? So it went from people everywhere to people nowhere. And, uh, I don't know. I'm lonely, man. Why don't you move somewhere else? Because, um, I'm 18. I'm, like, that down to my family. With, uh, you know... <laughs> You could you can move anywhere, Rodney. No, you're not Rodney. The other color is Rodney. You're... No, I'm Rodney. That's me. Sorry, I think I'm on my I, last. I don't know, uh, man. Brain cell of the day. Why don't you move, Rodney? If you don't like where you are, dude. You, you know, I, I know here, Rodney. You know, here's the thing, man. Is like, you know, you just turned 18, so you're very, <laughs> very new <laughs> to this idea that you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, you, like... All, all of your life experience so far has been other people telling you what to do, where you have to live, what you have to do with your time. <laughs> and you've turned 18 now, Rodney, and you no longer mm -hmm. have to succumb to anyone's authority except the authority of reality. Even that, you don't even have to succumb to if you want to if you want to do it big. Where would you want to move, Rodney? Where would I want to move? Yeah. Like, these past two months, man, I've just been thinking about, like, walking down the street for forever. That's I don't know where idea. I want to go, Do not but not here. down the streets forever. You could go hiking. You could no. hike the Appalachian Trail. Ooh. That'd be fun. I could do I like that. that for you. <sighs> I don't know, man. Go hike the Appalachian Trail, dude. Get in touch with Maybe nature. I will. I, that, that'd be helpful. Make friends with some bears. Ooh. Do you want to, like, let me ask you one last I, question before we go, because this is important. Do you, and this is a yeah. real question, I'm not fucking with you. Do you want to have friends? Because mm -hmm. some people, I've talked to a bunch of people, and some people, <laughs> no, I'm being serious, they like being alone. I don't know if I'd say I like being alone, but I feel like I've gone to the point now where, like, I'm pushing it away, even though I want it. You know what I mean? Mm. Do you have a real therapist? Uh, a few years ago. Did you talk to them about this? No, we talked about titties. You talked about titties? Yeah. What uh, What about titties? Um, well, I was seeing this girl at the time, and you know, it was a, it was a, it was a new experience. So that's mostly what we talked about. He's a cool guy, though. I won't call it therapy. It's more like counseling. Sure, sure. What, did he help you with... What, what, do you have titty problems? No. I was... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how I got there. I guess I was just feeling crappy one day. And I just signed up for it. And then we started talking for like a few months. And then he transferred. And uh, I haven't spoke to him since. His name was Brian. Well, Rodney, listen, here's what I'll tell you, you know. Mm -hmm. Try the woods. Not forever. Don't walk around the streets forever. I hate that idea. Don't do that. And Not a good idea. In the woods with a tent. If that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Don't do it because I told mm -hmm. you to do it. That's a terrible idea. Okay. But, in the meantime, look, Rod, I believe you will make friends, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. learn to be alone. It's a powerful skill. Not a lot of people have it. I, I, I don't, hmm. Go be alone where? Just learn to be alone. Learn how to enjoy yourself and be happy without being dependent on other people. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're out for the count. I think you're 18. I think you have a lifetime of friendships and experiences ahead of you. But in this meantime, mm -hmm. as you are facing mm -hmm. this particular challenge of loneliness, lean into it and learn how to accept it and be happy alone. And I do believe, eventually, you will make friends and have good relationships around you. But as of now, early in your mm -hmm. in your in your life career, just lean into being alone. Mm -hmm. Learn how to do it. I guess you're right. But Thank I don't you so know much man. for calling, Rodney. 
Hey, uh, before before we go, I, I really enjoy the podcast. I listen to that like at work and stuff. You're doing good stuff, Mr. Gay. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate that, man. You have a good rest of the night. Mm, yes, sir. Bye bye. Call from Lexi. Lexi. Hi. How are you, Lexi? I'm good. How are you? You know, Lexi, um, I'm floating around in outer space, and um, I'm happy. I feel free, in a sense. Does does that resonate with you at all? Freedom from from the 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 trials of Earth. Yeah, must be nice. <laughs> must be nice, you say. Why must that be nice? I don't know. Life's stressful, you know. Hmm. Why is life stressful, Lexi? Uh, I, uh, where do I begin? Um, Anywhere. I mean, I called to to tell you my vengeful story, but I mean, if oh, you want to get in, get into the pitfall pitfalls of my life, I can do that as well. Hmm. Well, uh, which of them do you think is uh, a a a I guess you could say more interesting topic to talk about. Let's 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 start with the ven- you know what? Actually, there's a strong possibility not a strong possibility. I, I over I overestimated this, but a possibility that these mm-hmm. two subjects are related. Let's start with the with the vengeance story. I'd love to hear that. Okay. So, I don't know, people might judge me for this, but um I used to live with a house full of guys and they were super messy and just super rude. The one guy in particular like used to use my shampoo and conditioner all the time. It made me so mad. He was so like lazy. He wouldn't clean and he would just leave like empty beer cans in the shower. <laughs> so weird. Um, not to mention like he would come in my room and like, I don't know, it was like essay type it was it was a really bad situation but I was about to move out so I wanted to go out with a bang I guess and just get back at him for all the like trauma he had put me through so he had he just got a perm he loved his new hair like that was his uh, you know number one thing in his life was his hair so the shampoo that he used of mine all the time, I emptied most of it out and replaced it with super glue and um, hair removal lotion and mixed it up. And I just left and left him with my my stuff. <laughs> mm. See, I, you know, I, I also am am. I also use my my roommate's um, toiletries every now and then, mm-hmm. shampoo. Because here's the thing, Lexi, it's not like the guy used your toothbrush or mm-hmm. your deodorant or something where, you know, it interacts with his body and then with yours, you know? It's just a mm-hmm. little bit of shampoo, you know? Why why did that upset you so much? Um, I don't know. Or was I was it that in addition to other things? Well, that in addition, but I was younger then, so, you know, like, I would go to work, and I would work, like, 45, 50 hours a week, and he didn't do anything, and then I would come home, and, like, you know, I work for my money, and he doesn't do anything, so, you know, it would really upset me when I'd get home, and they just use all my stuff, and in hindsight, it's, like, it was cheap, it was, like, Pantene, like, who cares, but uh, I guess it was everything else going on. What, you know, the fir- when when you first told me... That uh, you were living in this house with these guys, mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, I'm curious. Why did you choose to live with them? Because it doesn't sound. Did you know them beforehand? Yeah, um, I guess I was kind of like in a desperate situation. I was living out at my grandma's, and this is going to sound silly, but my grandpa died, and I was convinced that the house was haunted. And I was, like, too scared to stay there at night anymore. So I just would, like, I didn't have anywhere to, I don't know, it's really stupid. But, so I just moved in with, no, like, No, I don't whatever. think that, here's the thing. I don't think that you thinking 
that y- the house you are staying in is haunted is stupid. But <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> personally, I would sleep in a haunted house before sleeping in a frat house any night of the week. Sure. That's, I wish I would, like could go back and redo it because that makes so much more sense. <sighs> well, so you've gotten less less vengeful as the years have gone on, I assume. Um, yeah, I was pretty bad that year. There was there was another like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make myself sound like evil, but there was this girl nice in school. She turned like I had drank for the first time. I got sloshed off of one Bud Light, and. Um, she turned me into the school because we had posted like a video on Snapchat and I got suspended from the softball team for um, like a week. And I was so mad because it ruined my life. I got my car taken away from my mom and like my phone and everything. So I kind of, well, I started hanging out with her boyfriend and like, yeah, that was not good just to get back at her. Wait, you got all that for just drinking a beer on Snapchat? Yeah, I had to go and get, um, like, alcohol therapy um, to make sure I wasn't an alcoholic before I could return to softball. Um, And my mom is, like, strictly, like, anti-alcohol. So I got in a lot of trouble. I was underage, so, I mean, I guess it depends how you want to look at it, but yeah. Um, and, and today, the year of 2021, this year, mm-hmm. have you done anything vengeful or have you since calmed down? I think I've really like calmed down. I'm in a pretty good place personally. I mean, everything around me is kind of falling apart, but I think I'm pretty stable somewhat. Good. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Have you ever talked to any of these guys ever? ever no. No. He like I don't know he he was a, he was an oddball so he had like a really crazy experience on um, uh, acid and he decided from that point on that he was going to be a neurologist and he got like special grants from the government and he moved to New York City and now is going to get his doctorate in neurology and well yeah Lexi I just love a story where everything works out for every (laughs) character involved thank you so much for sharing you have a good rest of the night thank you you too call from Eric Eric hello how are you you sound very mysterious Eric are you doing that on purpose um, no, but I, I could do it some more if you want me to. To imply that you could do it some more implies that you're, implies that you have a level of intention that is high enough that you can control it. Do you feel yeah, as though you like know that. what you are doing right now and that you can control it? I, I like to think that I know what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Mm. How would you describe what you're doing right now? Um, how would I describe it? I'm lounging in a chair mm. that I spent way too much money on. How much money? It was like $600. $600. Hmm. Yeah. But, yet, something well, about, but, but something about the chair must have spoke to you in a way that made you feel as though it was worth the purchase. And what was it about the chair that spoke to you? Yeah. Um, it's it's a League of Legends chair. It's a League of Legends chair. When you say yeah. it's a League of Legends chair, do you mean it's a chair branded with League of Legends, or it is a chair that the engineers built specifically to aid the body in playing League of Legends, or perhaps both? Uh, it's actually a little bit of both. So the entire back of the chair is uh, designed after a specific character named Akali. And uh, it's like a whole green dragon type design. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's got a whole bunch of like flips and switches and it's made from nice leather. And, you know, yeah, switches. I think mean, was it worth it? Probably. I think so. 
what, what kind of what do the switches do? Like it has adjustable lumbar support. Mm. It has pretty much that. It has adjustable lumbar support, and then it goes up and down. <laughs> That's important. Um, when you say it's based off of the dragon character, uh, what speaks to you about the dragon character? Is he your favorite character in the game? Uh, he and not real. To be honest, I I haven't played League of Legends in like a year or two. I just I just really like the dragon. You haven't played League of Legends in a year or two, but when did you buy the chair? Like three months ago. Interesting. So you hadn't played League of Legends in a year, or even thought that much about League of Legends in a long time, and then you you went, you saw this chair. Where did you see this chair? It was an Instagram ad. It was an Instagram ad. And it spoke. Yeah, I had, I had, well, I had just gotten my first job out of college, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I work from home like half the week. And I figured I got to get a nice chair. You know, here's so, what I'll uh, say. Here's my personal financial philo- philosophy that, as it pertains to, to this purchase is I think you're absolutely right. Um, look, I personally am willing to put down good money on something if it is something that I will use every single day. And you... I assume sit in this chair and do your work every single day. Am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. And then so I look, play video look, games in it when I'm not working. An, it's an investment in that sense. You're using it every single day. So I, I don't think it was, you know, not necessarily. Well, whether or not it was worth the money is up to you to decide. Do you believe it was worth the money? Yeah. Uh, I mean. If it wasn't, I don't know. I try not to regret spending money on things. I definitely think. I was going to say that I think I've spent $600 on dumber things, but like mm. I, I haven't spent $600 on very many things. So mm. maybe not. What would you say your name was? My name is Eric. Eric. Are you sitting, you're sitting in the chair right now? I am sitting in the chair right now. How's it feel? Think about it for a second. Don't just say don't just say good. Like really take really close your eyes and really feel yourself against the seat and, and tell me how it feels. Mm, I have a memory foam pillow against the back of my head. The lumbar support is about midway through. And uh, my bum feels nice. Mm. Mm. Look, whenever you feel as though you've spent too much money on this chair, channel all of your attention into your butt. And think about how good it feels sitting in it. And then the mental energy that you're spending on this regret will, will, will fade away in favor of a more positive feeling. Yeah, I definitely think that that spent... Mm, I, I just thought about it and it's like, I don't think I could ever regret spending money on this chair. I, I definitely spend way more money on, the, on weed and that's, that's, that's the bigger issue. But yeah, of course, anytime. Have a good rest of the night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, folks, this is Lyle. In this next phone call, I have a guest who's joining me. This phone call was taken from a stream that I did with Swayco the Child, who is a rapper, musician, rock star, superhero man. Check him out at Swayco on TikTok. And yeah, if you hear another voice, that is who it is, and he's a good guy. So I thought I would chime in so that you, when you heard that other voice, you weren't like, who the fuck is that? That's my boy Swayco. Okay, back to the thing. Call from Kitty. Kitty? Kitty? Hello? Is that your name, Kitty? Kitty, like a cat. Oh, okay, cool. What's How's up, Kitty? Kitty? Uh, good. How are you guys tonight? Fantastic. Beautiful. How are you, Kitty? <laughs> good. Um, I'm okay, but I mean, I wouldn't be a hundred percent okay if I wasn't calling you guys. <laughs> so, well, what's the biggest problem? 
Um, I was seeing this guy for like two months and everything was going super well. We had a lot of the same interests, like we loved all the same music. We had like a ton of fun together. And then um, like two weeks ago, he was acting kind of strange. So I asked him like, you know, how are you feeling about this? Cause you seem kind of off. And he replied that, um, he felt like I was acting too much like his girlfriend. Um, but he had introduced me to his friends, his brothers, taken me out, cooked me dinner, you know, had me stay the night during the week. And so I was like very confused because I feel like those are all kinds of things that you do to a girlfriend. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hmm. Did you guys ever have the conversation of like, we're a relationship now? No, but I feel like I've never had that conversation with like anybody. So mm -hmm. he, he was kind of the one leading us into that territory. I mean, for God's sakes, like <laughs> he was, you know, begging me. He was the one begging me to put a finger in his ass. Like I thought that that was sort of a, a bonding relate like experience but apparently he didn't so mm. i don't know mm. you know next time you put your finger in a guy's ass there better be a ring in there right like maybe i'll take it off because i don't want to get it dirty but if i'm doing that for you you have to be doing something for me in terms of defining the relationship mm. Is that, um, so, I mean, how, how am, have you, have you made any sort of like, uh, attempts to have, have the, uh, have that, what are we conversation? No, I, I never tried because I, I liked where we were, you know, it wasn't super serious, but the sure. sex was good and we got along super well. So. Hmm. Well, what, what do you think now? Are you guys still talking? I think, no, I deleted his number and blocked him on everything because if I don't, then I'm very tempted, you know, and obviously it's not going to work out. So I have to prevent myself from being able to talk to him. Hmm. Well, what did, what did you tell him when, when he was saying all this type of stuff? Well, I said that, you know, I was really happy with the way things were at the moment, you know, like hanging out maybe once or twice a week, spending time together, but like he hadn't met my parents and I hadn't met him, like it was nothing serious. But he had urged that, um, you know, what we had already established was like too much for him. But he's the one who you know, brought me to meet all of his friends and meet some of his family, et cetera. So I was really kind of blindsided in that regard. Oh, so he took you to meet his whole family? Uh, not his parents, but his brothers and stuff, yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, okay, so you blocked him and you're not talking to him anymore. Are you, like, still going out to date people or are you still focusing on yourself right now? I'm trying to date because I just moved to a new area, so I'm just trying to meet people, but um, I'm in a really intense master's program, um, so it's it's hard for me to meet people and it's hard for me to go out because I'm really busy. Well, I think that's good, though. If you're, like, if, you know, if you blocked this guy and, like, you're trying to forget about him, you know, I think it's good to, like, have something to lose yourself in like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just hard because I feel like every time I get into that situation, it's like having to start over again every like three months or whatever. It gets so exhausting um, after a while. Well, what do you want? I don't believe in marriage personally. I think it's a sham. Um, if I, I want just a long term um, relationship with someone that's beneficial to both of us. And the sex is good. That's really all I want. <laughs> so. 
Well, I mean, look, knowing what you want is the first step to getting it. That's pretty good. A lot of people, they just sort of flounder around. They don't know what they want until they see it. So, you know, it's good that you have like a uh, 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 sort of, I guess, standard up front, you know. I think in the future, to avoid a situation like this, like, it's good that you know what you want. Make it clear. Not like, you know, I wouldn't show up on the first date and say that is the first thing that comes out of your mouth or anything like that. But, like, you know, bring 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 it up, you know? I think it's good to be honest with people because, you know, the worst that can happen is you bring it up and he goes, no, that's not what I want, which is actually a good thing if he does that because that saves you a hell of a lot of time. That's facts. Yeah, I think it's a conversation that should definitely be had, like, on the second date when they're inside of you, mm-hmm. you know. Where is this going? <laughs> Maybe not right when they're inside of you. I don't know. That might be. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Could be. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for the advice. I'm so glad I got through to you. I think I called like a hundred times. So. <laughs> We're so glad to have you, Kitty. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Bye, Lyle. Bye, Paul Dano. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting that a lot recently. <laughs> Bye, Kitty. Listen, Paul Dana was a very attractive man, so that is a compliment. It's a compliment. Oh, thank you, Kitty. <laughs> Take Good care. night, guys. Call from Dennis. Dennis? Hey. Dennis, it's it's been so long. How I can't believe it. Dennis, what's up? You're still here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your loyalty. How's it going? Um, it's going good, man. What are you up to? Nothing. I'm just, uh, I'm just laughing. I'm stoned. I just trolled my sister on a dating app. What did you do? Well, I just trolled my sister on a dating app. Um, do you know what? You knew what I was trying to ask you. You knew I was asking you for further elaboration. You knew that you were intentionally being broad. I'm not. I'm calling you out. You knew what I. You knew what I meant, Dennis. I know you do it every time. Though you always open that door. It's really good. I like that. You wonder how I trolled her. Yes. All right. So. uh... She had been talking to some guy and he sent her a selfie and in the background there was like a blue live uh, matter sticker and she didn't like that, which is fair. Um, so she decided not to talk to him any longer and she was like, oh, I'm going to post an ad on another dating app and I'm going to mention the blue live matter thing and say like, I'm disappointed. You know, I hope I won't get a message from someone like that on this app. Um, and she got a few messages and she sent them to me with with people that were like pro blue lives matter messaging her and she, we were like joking about it. And then I thought it would be funny if I pretended to be a pro blue lives matter person and messaged Mm. her. And then I did. Okay. So tell me about this uh, persona that you created. What was, uh, what was his name? Uh, I, I was a woman. I oh, was a, uh, I was a, I was a woman and I was an officer and I was, I wrote like, a, uh, I was like, the post deeply offended me. Do you, um, I could, I could read you the messages that I sent, but I'd be, <laughs> I pretended to be a lady officer that drove a, um, like a correctional facilities car. Hmm. Pretended to be a lady officer that drove a car. What, okay, what'd you say in the message? All right, so the, uh, well, her message was just like, I can't believe how many uh, Blue Lives Matter supporters there are on this, on this app. And I was like, uh, hello, I'm an officer. Your post deeply offended me. Sometimes I wonder who I'd be without my badge. It's like a special mask that I wear that turns me into a superhero and keeps me safe. And then she was just, she just dot, dot, dotted me. And at the same time, she was also sending me screenshots of this, asking me how she should, uh, like, respond. respond. That's pretty funny. And it was really, and then I started feeling guilty. 
And then I was like, uh, with the badge comes great responsibility. God, I'm fucking crying right now. How could you hate a cop? And then, I, and then, and then I like I waited a few minutes, and I wrote, "Fuck, I can barely see the keys." Dot dot dot. And then I put a zero at the end, so it was like a typo because I couldn't see the keys. And then, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because uh, I think it's funny, and I, I, I don't know. And then I wrote, "Wish I wasn't driving a police truck full of criminals to Rikers right now." Dot Did, dot um, dot. Uh, does, and now, now does she know? <laughs> does, does she now know that that that? Uh... No, she she still didn't know it was me. She was sending this to me, and I was like, I was like weird. Um, Dennis, can I can I ask you something? Yeah. Would you is where does your sister live? Like what part of the like what state? What, are you willing to answer that? What time zone does she live in? Is she awake? That's the, the main. Is she awake? Right now. Yes. Yeah. You, oh, you want me to like three way dial her in? Yeah. Would you? Well, well, yeah, really quick on. before you before you do that before you do that, uh, on this call, yeah. would you be willing would you be willing to admit to her that you are um, you are that profile? Oh yeah, she already yeah, duh. But she already knows. Hold on. Yeah, because I I felt I started to feel bad about it. Oh wait, I thought I would. I asked you if she knew, and you said no. Oh no, no, I, I revealed it. Oh, all right. Well, that makes it less interesting now. I'm sorry. You have nothing to apologize for. This is reality. You can't be you can't apologize for something that I, I don't think this. I don't think it was malicious of you. I don't think you did it on purpose to hurt me. I mean, she didn't know the whole time. She actually, she did. She didn't figure out. She didn't. The reason that I admitted it to her was because she didn't. She couldn't figure it out. Even after I had made like very obvious remarks that it was me, and she kept sending me the screenshots, and I started just to feel guilty. Dennis, um, Dennis, is there anything else that like I should do on my Dennis? You've been watching my Gecko show for the entire time that it's existed. Uh, you know, any like pointers, anything you think that uh, you know I should do to advance, um, you know, to the next uh, echelon? I don't know. I feel like uh, it's kind of. How do you feel? I guess that I want. I want to know that. How do you? Is it? Is it like? It feels a little surreal, doesn't it? Um, it's uh, surreal in what sense? Just the whole, like, the trajectory of it. It's just been unbelievable. How, it's, like, how many sleep? It's just unreal. I, I don't know. Watching it unfold. It's, um, no, it's been, it's been great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for it. I, I hope I'm, you know, I hope, I hope I'm able to continue doing it for, you know, a, a, a good bit as long as, um, you know, I am able to, you know, um, I think I, I, you know, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. I'm hoping, uh, to continue to feel good. Um, you know, this is the game. This is a good life. It's a good gig, you know, being a gecko on the computer, talking to people on the phone. Um, it's pretty random. Um, it's not very clear. That's a problem, but that's a problem I've always had. That's not very clear because the whole therapy gecko thing. It's like, so are you? A, are we on? Am I on here to like give people therapy? Well, not really. That kind of makes me uncomfortable to advertise. Well, it's like a fun. That. It's been like a fun bit. It's like you get to do you get to do the bit with different people every yes. time. Yes. Yes. And that's it's, the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Sometimes I think the streams where the streams where I feel as though I am committing more to the bit are ones that I feel good about. I think if I relax too much and, um, you know, uh, start to be myself uh, and, and less of like, you know, uh, an intentional portrayal of a character is when the is, is when is when I feel as though I begin to lose control. Dennis. Oh, man. So, OK, my. This is funny. My sister, she sent me a. She like, she's like, oh, this showed up on my like for you page or whatever. Oh, what was it? And it was like, it was like one in a clip that you posted, and I was watching it. And it was funny watching because it was like, uh, it's funny watching you try not to break, and you know what I mean. And sure. I was just like, it was good. It made me laugh really hard. So what was what was the clip? The clips are really good. Do you, wait, do you and also I just I like the idea of you being at home editing the clips yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just I really like that. It makes me 
it makes it so much more uh, sincere to me. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dennis. I, I I do I do my best to um to 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 I don't know how to finish that sentence. You know you know what I liked about you know what I liked about Swaiko a lot. I don't know if you, I don't know if you watched the beginning of the stream, but when when uh, that person told Swaiko that um um that's that Swaiko helped them, Swaiko ex Swaiko was very very gracious. Like 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 people. I think a lot of people they have a hard time. Um, like accepting praise about themselves, and I think that Swaiko did it in a very like, very 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 cool way. I really liked the way he was like, you know, very genuine about that. Fair. So I'll, I'll you also so, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a page off his book. I really appreciate all the kind <laughs> words, Dennis. Dennis, what was the clip? Was it the was it was it about was it about the or everything having a reason? Was it the Taco Bell thing? Oh my god, wait, so I like this even better. I like you trying to guess which clip it was that you thought that you broke in. Just tell me. No, I don't want to tell you. I like it even better now that it remains a mystery. I'm doing it a, as part of market research. I'm trying to see what clips are, are, are looking out there <laughs> into, the, into the thing. No, I like the I, I like the guessing though. The talk I I haven't I haven't I don't know if it, yeah, I don't even know if the Taco Bell one is I have to look. I'm so out of touch. So what was what was the clip of? I'm not going to tell you. Why was it the guess? one of the? Was it the one where I where I, where I did that? I screamed. <laughs> oh man, this is too good. Now I gotta go. I'm right. gonna go. All right. I'll All talk right. to you soon, Dennis. All right. I love you. Goodbye. Bye. Call from. Aisha. Hello. 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 Hi, how are you? Um What's So that's name? a no. What's, what's my name? name? My name is Aisha. Aisha. Aisha, what's going on with you, dude? Um not much. Been a, been a little bit weird since the hurricane and I had to evacuate, so I've just kind of been all over the place and mm -hmm. I kind of want to just get back to my apartment and be in my own space, but I'm safe. So I guess that's a plus there. Where are you calling from? Um, so I grew up in New York, but I just moved to Jersey in May. Jersey, like how, where in Jersey, like Jersey city, close to the city and shit. Um, no, I'm actually like about an hour from the city. I'm like kind of in central, a little North. Okay. Do I don't do, actually do do? know the geography too well. What do I do? Um, so I just graduated in May with my doctor of pharmacy, and I'm in a postdoc fellowship right now for two years. Postdoc fellowship. Okay. Yes. Like Very that. interesting. It's interesting, you know, being a, in a postdoc fellowship. So you're trying to be a doctor person. Um, no, well, I already have my doctor, and I'm a pharmacist. Can you get yeah. me uh, some Adderall? Um, let's or talk off the air and for sure. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely would lose my license, but if we talk off the air, then you know I can I can try and see what I can do. But we're just kidding. This is not so. real. We're just joking. <laughs> if anyone, I've just we're just saying random things. This isn't real. What's your name I again? I actually decided Sam? my name. <laughs> my name is Aisha. Aisha, tell me what you decided. What I decided, I decided that I'm actually not going to practice and that I uh, sold out and I'm working for Big Pharma now mm -hmm. to make sure that kids inhalers are like $300. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Are, are you, are you going to make a lot of money? That's the goal. That's what the whole fellowship's about. So hopefully Do, after. I... Yes. Well, I was gonna say, if you sell you, if you sell out, you better make a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. Um, I just didn't want to practice pharmacy anymore. You know, I've worked in a pharmacy for like six years, and you know, people are shitty, and you know, I can deal with all you know people calling me a bitch, throwing shit at me, getting pissed about you know things that aren't my fault. But I realized I had a little bit more self respect, so I jumped out of that boat. Mm. So, uh, so you're what do you do now? You help. 
Big Pharma jack up the prices on uh, medication and stuff. No, nah, that's just a joke. I um, I it's it's really boring. I basically work to get drugs approved. So I work with the FDA to like mm. get drugs for my company on the market. Hmm. You work to get drugs. For, are your company the company they work for? Are their drugs good? Do they have good drugs? Um, they're. I'm not going to say what company, but we're in the top five pharmaceutical industries in the world. Is it one of the ones that did a vaccine? You guys, you guys got a vaccine that you did? <laughs> no, we actually didn't, but we're helping to produce a vaccine, but it's not ours. That's cool. Um, how much money do you, are you going to make? Um, in the future, yeah, hopefully a minimum of 100k. But I'm aiming to, you know, climb the ladder, network, you know, brown nose people, and try and work my way up. So we'll Beautiful. see where that goes. What are you gonna? What are you gonna spend all your money on? Um, probably paying off my quarter of a million dollars in student loans. You have a quarter start of a million dollars in student loan debt. Yeah, just for that two letters sucks. before my name. Yeah. Just for two letters before your name, doctor. Yeah, the D and the R. Yeah, that's fucking expensive, dude. Yeah, it is. But then, like, I can just force people to call me doctor in like weird social settings, and it's just like a great power move. But it's also like crippling debt and anxiety constantly. But you know, we live in with that. I feel like everyone has debt, so you know, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. Well, that's um. You know, that's what we do, right? We go into large amounts of debt and do certain things and accrue money for titles and things to uh, give us a sense of prestige. And then, you know what happens? What happens? Yeah. We die! I can't, can't wait take, for that part. We can't take anything with us. Really? Why can't you wait to uh, die? <laughs> um, that's, like, kind of a joke. I, I you know, I, I feel like everyone depressed nowadays i used to like go through really strong bouts of depression especially in my adolescence um and then you know i was prescribed meds and all of that but i was gonna I've say you guys should make a medicine for that <laughs> they have actually um but uh i don't know i just you know i i kind of work through that stuff and i'm feeling a lot better now you know everyone has those off days now but i'm like 10 times better than it was like five years ago mm. What, why I actually called, and I know we already did a lot of kind of relationship advice today. Uh, I'm ready to. I'm but, ready to do more. I feel actually. I feel as though we haven't done a lot of things on the topic. So so please hit us. Um. So I have been dating my boyfriend for over two years now, and I love him. Everything with us is just really easy. It's fun. We've been doing long distance for about a year and a half while I was in school and he was doing his career and he got a house and he loved his job and I just graduated in May. And instead of being two hours apart like we were when I was in school, we are now three hours apart. So we still have this distance. And when we see each other, it's like really fun and great, but I just have this overwhelming anxiety that I need to end it. And I've been thinking about it so much that I think it's kind of this red flag that deep down I really want to because oh, yeah. my my the job that I have right now is for two years. And then afterward, if I get signed on after like my contract ends, then I'm going to stay here. And I'm not moving to where he is because they don't really have like big industry there and there's not really career opportunity. And... The other option, which we've talked about, we're really open with each other, is that he moves. But, you know, he loves his job. His family's close by. He loves his coworkers. And he has a freaking house there. And he's just like, I shall sell the house. I'll, like, you know, get a new job, all this stuff. And the anxiety behind the whole situation is just making me want to hit the brakes. Hmm. 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 What do you? Yeah, that's a tough situation. What's the is the is the anxiety coming from the inability to make a decision? I think the anxiety is not about the decision because I think I've thought about it so much that I'm gonna do it, 
but it's more about the logistics because we're long distance. So the options are, you know, I'm not going to make him drive down here. I feel like that'd be cruel for him to like drive back three hours after I broke up with him. So I'd have to drive there. And then like, do I just drive there, do it, and then drive back and drive like six hours in the day? I could like... Oh, you mean the somewhere. logistics of going to meet him in yeah, person? Yeah, I feel like no one actually... Him? Exactly. No one actually talks about the actual act and logistics behind it. And mm. as you know, I'm a very scientific person and I like strategy. So <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out the best method. And I just, I feel like I have to drive there and do it. But I don't know if I should like, my first thought was like, I can stay a couple days and see how I feel and then like decide at the end. But I feel like that's kind of more fucked up. Nah, yeah, I don't think you should do that. I think if you're going to go up there, you should uh, know what you're going to do. Um, I mean, by the way, you know, yeah, I, if I were you, I mean, look, logistically, if that's all you are worrying about, yeah, drive the six hours. Yeah, I feel like the three-hour drive back, like, would be really necessary to, like, cry it out and, like, listen to music and stuff. But I just do it. Do the, uh, do the drive. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, I've learned that doing long drives is really not that bad, you know? Because here's the thing. Think about everything. That, what, what day are you going to go? Saturday? Um, I don't know. So I actually was just displaced from the hurricane. So wow. I'm actually was in a hotel last night, and then I drove to my sister's. So I don't really have a lot of... I have, like, two T-shirts with me because I have to evacuate in, like, a half hour. Right. So I don't have anything to, like, go this weekend, really. I'm, like, really unprepared. Mm. Well, because all, all I was going to say is, like, look, you know, from from noon to 6 p.m., what are you going to be doing with those six hours anyway? You know, just take the drive. And then it's good, right, on the on the three-hour drive back, you get you get the, you get your cry in, you throw on a tape, you do what you get, you do what you do. Throw yeah, on a I tape? feel like what I just need to, mean? like... <laughs> put on a, a music, put on some music. Not I mean, a, I have a, a really old car, so we do have a tape in there, so maybe I'll something that I'll listen to back to back. I do have a One Direction CD in my car, but that's the only CD I have. Do it. Put on some One Direction. I like yeah, that. I used to be a big stan back in the good young days. You I don't know why I'm was? lying. I'm still a big fan. I'm a big fan of One Direction. Always was, always will be. You know, I think it's good to be proud of who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I guess hey, I just um... gotta like grow the balls and do it. What did you say your name was? What? What did you say your name was? My name is Aisha. Aisha. You're not going to remember at the end of the phone call. It's okay, but... I don't remember anything about anyone. That's not true. I just don't remember people's names. I remember a lot of things about you, but I don't remember your name. Um, well, Dr. Aisha, I appreciate um, <laughs> you sharing with us. And uh, look, I hope everything works out. And uh, you know, I hope you enjoy your, your cry while listening to One Direction. That sounds like it's poetic. Lean into Thank it. Thank you so Lean much. Lean into yeah. it, Aisha. It's an experience of life. All the bad, all the good. Take it all in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jack. I really needed that push. Of course. You have a good rest of the night, Aisha. You too. Take care. Night, Doc. Bye. Call from... Matt. Oh, hold on. I gotta do a quick... Uh, hello? Anyone there? Yep. Hi. Hello, Lyle. Hey, what's up, my guy? How you doing? I can't complain. How are you? You can't complain. You can complain. Uh, I don't mind I, if you complain. I, I just don't to like complain. to, that's all. But um, I, You know, I don't like to complain either. Um, that's not true at all. I like complaining a lot. It feels good to complain. I wonder what the... New, <laughs> I, I wish that a new, I had a neuroscientist... That's my next guest. We got to get a neuroscientist on because I there is some sort of I want the scientific explanation of why it just feels so good to complain. Feel it complaining sometimes feels even better than fixing the issue in a weird way. Like it it, it I mean, compensates it for not fixing the issue. Soothes our pride, right? Say that one more time. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I was talking over you in a in a manic rant. I think it soothes our pride a little bit. Mm. If you could complain, well, let's see. I mean, what do I have to complain? You know, life's pretty good in a macro sense. What do you, what, uh, what's your name again? Mac. Mac. 
What's going on with you, Mac? How's your love life? Um, I mean, I don't have one, so you I guess that's something one. to complain about. It, do you want one? Because um, it's not necessary to have a life, a love life. I mean, absolutely. I think that. I, I mean, if I was going to complain about, um, one thing about that. Whew, that's, that's, I think that's tough for me without, like, I automatically go to complaining about what I could do better and not just about how I want things to be. I don't know. Well, like I think well, that's a, uh, no, but that's a good thing. That means that you're taking, like, you know, some modicum of personal responsibility, which is always good because, you know, look, we don't have influence over the actions of others, but we have complete another control of our own actions. And so it's a good place to start. What, what is it that you think that you could do better? In your in your own sort of thoughts about it. Um. Well, I guess to do with um, vulnerability and being sure. willing to put myself out there, even when I um am not able to. I, I guess I, I'm used to being able to guide someone in, a, you know, a direction that's interesting to me. But like with my life circumstances right now, um, Wait, what do you what do you mean by you used to be able to guide someone into a into? A I direction mean, like I, I guess like being being a leader, um, being able to like share things I enjoy with somebody. And be be the one who's outgoing, but um, mm. Mac probably I guess the, yes. You say you want to be more vulnerable, right? Yeah. Because here's the thing: is you know, be like here's I here's what I believe. Is if you're not outgoing, if if you look into your heart and you like are thinking about who you are and you have a healthy amount of self awareness and you decide I I'm really not an outgoing guy, I'm kind of an introvert, and you and you accept that about yourself instead of trying to force yourself to be outgoing even though you're not, and you instead like take a sort of intake of who you are, how you think, how you operate, how you like to maneuver social situations and you go i i'm not outgoing i'm not the, i'm not gonna walk up and be like hey everyone's i'm not gonna walk up to a circle and be like what are we talking about here that's not you you don't have you don't that you don't that doesn't have to be you you know that's the thing it's like there's all these fucking you know i i understand why people people think that that's what they have to do because you know there's like this i guess societal ideal of what a successful social person looks like but if you were to instead look at yourself and go okay that's not me but what is me you know and then what kind of person might be interested in whatever is you you know instead of trying to be what you're not because if you try to be the you know go up to the circle of guy hey what's going on kind of guy but that's not you then you're gonna you're gonna fail because you're you're not leaning into who you are. You're trying to be something else. Does that make sense? Uh, I I respect that. Yeah, I, I can hear that. But at the same time, like a part of me resonates with that. Like I, I there's a there's a joy in doing that. That like part of me feels like it is missing out, not having that, not not. Sharing that with others, right? But the time I think you can thing, understand is, that, right? Well, here's the thing: is the time that you're spending, like, like wishing you were more outgoing, because, like, you know, you think that that's the way to be. Is is time? I think you should be spending like doing a, a, a sort of an inward look at yourself and going, "Well, okay, I'm not that, but I am a lot of things. I'm sure you are a lot of things. I'm sure that." There are you have strengths because everyone has their strengths, and you should play to what you believe you are good at, 
as opposed to trying to w wire yourself in a way that is not you. Does that make sense? So instead of, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to get more concrete with this because I feel like I'm being too erythral here, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, fuck it. Like, 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 let's say, let's, I, let's I say think you're... going back to vulnerability is, sure. is what you're saying that you can be, you can be vulnerable alone. Right. I'm not even saying what's, what's Mac, Mac, what do you like to do? Do you have any hobbies of any kind? Like anything you like to do? Even if you think like it's not. Like uh, uh, anything that you like to do. Let's take um, like hiking. That's, that's a perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So you like to hike. Yeah. You say your love life. Okay, you told me that your you, your love life doesn't exist. Have, have you been trying to make it exist? Have you been like putting yourself out there anywhere at all? No, not recently. Um, sure. I've found that my intentions on what I'm what I'm looking for is really cloudy and really hard to like I've really struggled to be clear on that so um i end up at least in the past i've ended up being an asshole and um because i didn't know what i was looking for you've ended up being what do you mean by you've ended up being an asshole um just Not treating people well sure. because I wanted something, or sure. because I, um, like I wasn't. I don't feel like I was present and able to connect with people enough to even notice where they were at. Sure, sure. Why? Why do you feel like you weren't present? Were you? Were you like? Were you like distracted? I, I mean, by something. I had. Thing? I had a good reason. I mean, not struggling with. Mental health stuff. I mean, there's a, a lot going on. Like, sure. just where, um, I mean, um, that even now makes it a real challenge for me to connect with people and feel, well, even feel comfortable opening up and feel like I'm being heard and know that I'm connecting with someone. When so, you say um, when you say your intentions were cloudy, do you do you mm -hmm. which is, is you know, I, I totally get that. We you know, Swiko and I were talking to uh, 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 Kitty about that. Kitty, you knew exactly what she wanted, and um, that's important. That's helpful. Do you do you feel like you don't know like what you want? Because you know, if you're if you're saying that you have a non-existent love life and that that bothers you, like it's it, if. Like, of course you're going to be... First of all, of course you're not going to have something if you don't even know what it is that you want right. to have. Right. You know? And then and then the other well, side, it's like, how, how why, why would you be upset that you don't have something that you don't even know what the thing is? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I, I do know more of what I don't want, and it's really stressful for me to question. see myself unconsciously like I I if I see myself reacting to others in ways that like I know is going to get me something I don't want if that makes sense I'm trying to be concrete as well. like I'm trying to give an example here but um Um, what did you say your name was? Mac. Mac. I'm sorry. I probably asked your name Mac, a thousand yeah. times. That's kind of I. You know, I've, I've been able to. I've been able to own it. I've been able to um, own it and make it uh, actually my like thing. It's a, it's become an endearing thing that. about me now that I forget I other that. people's names. It's not a. Uh, you know, I've I've tricked everyone into 
into uh, making it part of my like my shtick that I forget people's names. I pretend as though I do it on okay, it's, for comedy. It's a lot of people. I, I respect that. You know that I just uh, you know forget people's names because I'm forgetful. Well, look, I'm taking in so much information. There's so much. There's so much. Oh, it's mind There's so blowing. many things about you, job. Mac, that are so much more interesting than your name. Um, Mac. Listen, here's, here's, but here's, you still remember it, so I appreciate you ever, that. You ever, you ever tried joining a hiking group? That's what I was going to ask you. You ever tried joining a hiking group? That's the first step of putting um, yourself out there. Because here's what a lot of fucking people yeah, do. Yeah, in the past, yeah. And I don't know if this is what you do, but a lot of guys fucking do this. Girls, too. It's not really a gender thing. But, you know, maybe you look at yourself and you're like, man, man, you know, I'm never going to be able to, like, find a girlfriend if I can't. Like go out to a bar. I don't, I don't and, like, think I tell start, myself like, that. But, talking okay. to people, or, 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 or I guess I guess what I meant, no. What, what I mean to say is like maybe you uh, you know I don't I don't know this about you you know but like are you are you possibly like looking for uh, uh, stuff in the wrong places? But uh, I'm realizing it. You, you don't you, you you wouldn't even know what you're what you're looking for. So you you would have to figure that out. Right. I mean, well, something that came to mind with what you said was like there's this. I think I've built up some resistance there where I'm, there's that fear, like, I mean, going back to one of it, but there's that fear that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like be, how can I put this, it's almost like, it's almost like I'm expecting myself to look after the other person so much that I and expect myself that I'm afraid of fucking things up and afraid like afraid that like I'm taking on so much responsibility there that I'm not giving myself a chance to be open if that makes sense like I'm taking it so seriously Sure. That I don't like. I'm. I'm not relaxed. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not myself. So how could how could somebody get to know me like that? Be pretty tough. It is tough. It's a tough journey. It's a long journey. I'm not good at it necessarily. A lot of people aren't good at it. It's a tough thing. It's a tough thing to not only be yourself. Being yourself actually. That's it's, it's only one part of it. You got to be yourself and then accurately present yourself honestly to the world, which is tough to do. You know, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. You know, it's a scary thing, but, you know, that's your mission. That's your homework. That's your goal. Mac. Could you make that a little bit more specific for me? You I don't wish mind? I could. I wish I could. <laughs> oh, my God. I... Mac? Yeah. What's up, Lyle? Listen, man, I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you being vulnerable um, with us right now. I hope that, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm honored. I'm grateful that, um, you know, you feel comfortable to share all this with us. And, uh, look, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you have a good rest of the night. Thank you for listening. Of course, Mac, you have a good rest of the night. Take care. Oh, that was 15 minutes long. I've lost all track of time. Call from Alfred. Alfred, thank Alfred. you, an actual pine cone. Alfred! Hello? Hi. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? <sighs> Alfred, is that you? Yeah, this is me. I'm Alfred. You're Alfred? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Alfred. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what my parents named me. Can you turn your stream off, Alfred? Can I hear what? Can you turn your stream off? I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Okay. There we go. You know what I like about doing this stream is is, is sometimes I really you know I know that I'm like broadcasting myself. It's 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 an interesting thing that goes on in my mind when I'm doing this, Alfred, which is that you know sometimes you know I I am acutely aware of the fact that I'm broadcasting myself to people, at which you know in a lot of sense would like make you feel as though you're watched. But I get this weird thing where like 
I actually feel I actually don't feel like people are watching, and so I feel like uh, I'm able to enter this, you know, if I really want to, uh, a sort of dreamlike state in which the conversation that we're having is 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 you know can flow in whatever direction that we would we would like it to, similar to to a lucid dream in which um, the elements can you know be under your your control and don't necessarily have to make a you know coherent sense by the logic of of reality yeah i feel that man i I totally feel that like i think that's how every conversation should go you know Mm. but it doesn't sometimes Mm. you know Sometimes, you know, you know, we could have a whole conversation and then afterwards it's like it doesn't even feel like it even happened, similar to a dream. You know? I've had experiences like that where, you know, you go you, you do a whole thing and it doesn't even feel like it happened every time. Life feels like a dream sometimes. Do you feel that? How do you what what do you think about deja vu? I'm sorry about that. What are you sorry about? About I feel like I cut you off like a little, a little earlier right there, you know. No, no, no. I don't like cutting I mean, people off. No, look, dude. Look, we're talking on the phone right now, and there's a lot of techno. We, I can't read your body language. I can't look at your face, and um, but I actually think that that's good. I feel as though we we can. I, I you know, I have less um, less variables that are influencing the way that I, I approach you as a person because um, we're all sort of on an equal playing field here. You know, I feel like if you were like you know, like like six foot tall and and um had a beard maybe i would treat you differently than if you were like wearing a pink shirt and flip-flops and had a i don't know i don't know what i'm saying no i I, I I kind of do know what i'm saying no Uh, i i I get alfred you said your name was yeah like alfred e newman alfred e newman is that is that a scientist someone in the chat said how tall i was i'm five six Alfred E. Newman, but, he is the uh, mascot of Mad Magazine. Mad Mag, like Mad TV, or Mad TV is based off of Mad Magazine, which uh, Alfred yeah, Newman yeah, is yeah. the the mascot. So of. I'm the the guy with the big smile, right? With the orange hair, I think, or brown hair. How's your love life going? Um, uh, it's, it's good. It's going. It's going well, I guess. Yeah, seeing anyone? Yeah, um, I'm, I can't complain to be honest. Um, you know, um, perfect, perfect, Alfred. Yeah, yes. Do you feel as though you got what you wanted out of this conversation, or did you even want anything out of this conversation? In which case, um, you would have gotten what you wanted out of this conversation, which was nothing in particular. Because you received, I, I don't know what I wanted out this conversation. To be honest, um, I just wanted to talk to you and you know shoot the shit. You know, it was. It was it, it, I think this was nice. I enjoyed talking to you, Alfred. You know, you seemed as though you were willing to go in whatever direction that I, I sort of, I sort of, um, you know, wanted to go. And uh, you know, I appreciate that energy that you have, um, that you have shown me. You know, it's it um, very generous. I'm from Philly. If the, if that. That does anything? I don't know. <laughs> You're from Philly, or do you or do you live there right now? Yeah, I lived here my whole life. What part of Philly? Uh, North Philadelphia. North Philadelphia. That's why I lived in North Philadelphia for three or four years. I love. I love yeah, North so, um, it's a great city. We, we went to the same college, I think. Uh, we temple. did. Yeah. Did we? Did you go to Temple? I think. Yeah, I, I think went to, I went to Temple. You. Yeah, went to Temple University. Um. What'd you study there? Uh, fucking useless degree. Uh, marketing. Marketing. What year yeah. did you graduate? I graduated uh, twenty eighteen. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to get out of here, to be honest. I don't, I don't really like Philly anymore. Yeah, you know. Uh, where do you want to go? New York, L.A., uh, Chicago. Tokyo. You ever been to Tokyo? I have not been to Tokyo. I would love to go, but you know, one day. That's what that's what everyone always says, and then they die. 
I, I, I really want to go like cross country on the RV and just like live on the road and just like see places. That would be cool. I just got back from doing that. Um, I was I lived on the road for like five months out of a not out of an RV, but out of a out of a sedan. Out of a sedan. That's out hard. Sedan. That's tough. My um, back would hurt. No, we weren't. Uh, I mean, we we were living in a we stayed in Airbnbs, but you know. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let me tell you something about just going to see the country. Is um. Just, you know, everyone's going to, look, everyone's going to tell you all this shit of like, you know, oh man, uh, go, go to, go to Oregon. It's so beautiful. Oh, go to Arizona. Look, everywhere <laughs> in the entire world is exactly the same. Um, and look, the same. Save, save, save yourself some money. Just go to Google images, type in Arizona, look at the cactuses there. It's the same thing. We don't have mountains in Philly or like, um, a beach. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's actually pretty beautiful. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Well, are you gonna do it? Are you gonna go cross country? What's stopping you? You got a job? Quit it, man. I, I need a job to do what? Freaking, um, I don't know what I want to do. To be honest, um, do you, where do you live? Do you live in with your mom, or do you live in a real in a house that you pay for? Uh, yeah, I live with my mom. Yeah. Do, oh, you do. All right. So, what do you need money for? What do I need money for to yeah, to dude. be? Uh, to have you know have my own apartment and put things in it and just like cook my cook food and just like learn the the how to be an adult you know I think I, I need that. to do that I respect yeah. that I respect that I respect that yeah. yeah well Alfred listen tell your mom I said hello she seems like a nice lady she birthed a very nice son and um she, you know, she's hella nice Philly. shout out to Philly shout out to yeah. people thank you so much Lyle of course, man. You have Appreciate a good rest your night, positive energy. Thank you, man. You have a good rest of the night. Have a good one, Lyle. Bye. Call from Alan. Alan. Hello. Alan. Oh my god, I got on. Alan, 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 Alan. This is awesome. Why? We haven't done anything yet. I'm so I don't Alan, I've we've I've I I haven't even I'm 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 look, I'm grateful. Alan, but I mean is I I'm 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 glad to he, I'm glad to hear that, Alan. I'm glad to hear that. Why is it awesome? Tell me more. It's my first time calling. And I got on. You're on. You're on, Alan. I'm on, you're on, everyone's on. Tonight's the night. Bring it up, do it up big. Alan? Uh, yeah? What you? What did you uh, want to talk about, Alan? Uh, what did I I have a I have a bad habit of uh, eating um, bad food intentionally mm. in order to avoid uh, food poisoning accidentally. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know, when something's like slightly old or expired, well, you know. I just, I feel like expiration dates, you know, are just a suggestion. You intentionally eat bad food. You Okay, but you said you eat bad food to avoid food poisoning, which is counterintuitive. Well, yeah, in case if I do it, you know, accidentally. <laughs> um, My wife says I have an iron stomach. You eat bad food to avoid eating bad food. You eat bad food intentionally to avoid eating bad food accidentally. In order to not get sick, yes. You know what? What's your name again? Alan. Alan, I'm so sick of the conventions of society that trick us into believing that every... 
everything that we say has to make complete and utter sense. I truly am. And I believe that, that you know, while what you're saying doesn't make any sense at all, I admire you. I'm being dead serious right now. I admire you as a valiant soldier against this convention that everything that everyone says has to make sense all the time. It really is. It's manufactured to make us feel alone, Alan. You know, you ever watch a TV show? No, what you just said, no one would ever say on a TV show. Because if someone wrote that down and tried to make someone on a TV show say it, it would they'd have to pitch it in a room full of people, and then the guy at the head of the room would be like, "What the fuck does that mean?" And then it would never make it on. But and then and now you're alone in that thought. But I don't want you to be alone in that thought because why? Should you have to be alone in that thought just because apparently everything everyone says has to fucking make sense? I don't think it does. What? Why? Why does everything everyone says have to make sense, man? Say it again. Say what you tell me. Tell me again what you just told me. Well, basically, so I feel like explanations everyone are listen to this. just a suggestion, and mm-hmm. so I eat bad food intentionally, mm-hmm. and. Case if I do it accidentally, I don't get sick. Yes, say say that again. <laughs> I eat all bad food. seven thousand people listen to this again. Not I want. Why do you, Alan? Do you, Alan? I'm I'm not making fun of you. I know that to an untrained eye, I know it might seem like I'm. I'm swear on my fucking life, I'm not making fun of you right now. I'm. I appreciate you genuinely. Who are you with? I'm with my wife. You're with your wife. You know she what? She says I have an iron stomach. <laughs> Good. Can I talk to her? Sure. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to her. She sounds Hi. awesome. Hello? Hey, what's your name? I'm Hope. Hope, how are you? Good. How about you? I'm doing amazing. Hope, what's what's your favorite thing about uh, Alan? What what? Uh, why did you marry him? What is your what's been keeping your relationship alive? Uh, he just makes me laugh like no one else. <laughs> I don't know. No one else can put up with me. <laughs> no one else can put up with you. Put put up with what? What about you? Uh, do people have trouble putting up with? Uh, I I can be kind of crazy. <laughs> Interesting. In what way can you be kind of crazy? Um, I don't know. I like to have mental breakdowns. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay, yeah. so how does, how does Alan <laughs> um, handle you when you are, quote, acting crazy? Um, he kind of just ignores me, and yeah, it just works. <laughs> he ignores you, and it works. Is that what you, do you, do you yeah. like the fact that he ignores you? Would you... Would you prefer him um, not ignore you, or or it sounds as though the system that you two have in place has been working for both of you, as far as you've presented it to me? Um, he doesn't like say anything mean about it, and he like, so it, it works, okay, and, I, so and I'm fine with it. The yeah. absence of him doing anything <laughs> negative is is enough. You don't desire for him to do anything actively <laughs> positive in response. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I understand that. Look, if you're, if you're <laughs> quote, as you said, in your own words, going crazy, maybe you just want to be left alone. I understand that. Uh-huh. That's, that's completely valid. Um, <laughs> you know, that, it's, I know, you know to, again, again, to the untrained eye, it might seem as though there's something wrong, but this is just the product of two people who um, are complex, uh, who have found each other and learned to understand each other and, and their complexities. Uh-huh. And maneuver. <laughs> I'm impressed. I am. I think you have a good relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone else would be able to handle me, but I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. That's okay. What? Um. Your husband told me that he. He in. Your husband told me that he intentionally eats food that has gone bad. So that he yes. does not 
accidentally eat food that has gone bad. Can you explain yes, it, it, any further what that means? That he's stupid and is gonna get some kind of poisoning someday. Hmm. No, there was one. I remember when we first got together, we went to a Mexican restaurant and he had leftovers, and I found out that he ate like two week old leftovers. And I don't know how he survived that because I think that's disgusting. Mm. And it was it was chicken, so there's like no way it was any good. Mm. And yet you continue to love him. Yes, <laughs> I mean, why not? Why not? Um, is I that mean, what you said no when he first asked you to marry him? No, no, I said yes. I well, obviously, but I didn't like. I I pretty much only said yes. <laughs> okay. Um. Hmm. You two are so interesting. What else do I want to know about you guys? I like you guys. What else should I know about you guys? What else should we all know about you guys? I don't know. What should they know about us, Alan? How'd you meet? We have a snake. Oh, we have a snake, a pet snake. Of course you have a pet snake. I already knew that. I already assumed that. You did? Oh. No, I don't know why his I said name that. Is... <laughs> no. well, his How did you guys is... meet? Um, online, on Tinder. On Tinder? Yeah. In, well, in uh, 2000... What? In 2000 what? 16. 2016. Okay, so you guys have, 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 have been together for about five years. <laughs> yeah. What was the first thing you said to him, or he said to you, uh, via the Tinder messaging? I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> no, nah, and then um, like? I don't remember, but I know we added each other on Snapchat um, soon after, and I just found out the other day, which I don't remember, that he stopped talking to me for a couple weeks because he was trying to decide between me and another girl. Hmm. He told you that. Yeah, he told me that, but I don't remember him not talking to me, so I don't know. How did that make you feel? I I yeah, I don't know because I I didn't I don't remember that happening, so I'm like whatever. But he, he, he made the you right choice. So that he reminded you of the fact that he once told you that, but you forgot. <laughs> yes, because much. a lot of pe- that would piss off a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was. Like so long ago that I don't even remember that happening, so I don't care. <laughs> Man, you two are absolutely perfect for each other. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel as though you conveniently forget things that are convenient to forget? Um, I don't just conven- conveniently forget things. But if it's, like, super long ago and stuff like that, then I'm probably not going to remember. Hope and... Dressman's name? Alan. Alan. Alan and Hope. Alan Hope sounds like a good name for a president. But not, <laughs> not, in, the, not in this current year. Maybe, like, in the 19-whatever. Alan Hope. Uh-huh. I'd vote for Alan Hope. <laughs> Hope and Alan. Um, give me. Can I? Can I? Have, can you hand the phone back to Alan? Yeah. Yo yeah, yo. Yeah. So you intentionally eat bad food, so that later down yeah. the line you don't accidentally eat it. Yes. I've also been drinking, but, you know. You enjoy eating it? Uh, bad food sometimes. Thank you so much for calling, Alan. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the night, and uh, I, I, I find you inspiring. <laughs> Thank you, Gecko. Therapy Gecko's on the line, taking your phone calls every night.